Some had been referred from infectious disease doctors, gastroenterologists, it was, some were self-referred. And what was funny is we, we, we wanted to see whether there was any significant difference in the accuracy of their diagnosis depending on the referral source. So were specialists more accurate than maybe patients who were self-referred or um, in, you know, the primary care doctors? And there actually wasn't any difference. Um, the specialists were as likely to send people um, kind of inappropriately for fecal transplant as patients were to present themselves. But um, it was very interesting and we actually kind of, it was close to $50,000 in unnecessary vanco in those patients if each one of them had gotten an additional course of vancomycin, so. Well, most of them, by the time they come to me, they've heard about it, they've looked it up, they've seen it online, the awareness is out there among patients, and they, they come for it, and they know what they're getting into. The way I explain, like, the mechanism, the way I explain, like, how it works, I say, think of your gut bacteria as, like, a healthy lawn. And if you have a healthy lawn, a good established front yard, and it's, and it's nice and green, it's not going to get a lot of weeds. You might get a dandelion here or there, you pluck it out, that's it. But let's say a drought comes through or some kind of pestilence to your yard and the, the lawn gets disrupted, it comes up all weeds. And you can put all of the weed kill, you know, think of the weeds as C. diff and the little um, seedlings as the little C. diff spores. And you can put as much, you know, weed killer on as you want, kind of take care of that infestation. But then as soon as you turn your back and come, it's going to come back all weeds again unless you solve the problem of the unhealthy lawn. And with fecal transplant, we're sort of sowing a new lawn and giving them, reestablishing that good, healthy bacterial balance. I think encapsulated formulations, for sure. Um, there's another couple of studies going on right now. There's a study looking at uh, vaccination for people with C. diff, like vaccinate them against it, high-risk groups. Um, there are also um, some studies looking at um, immunotherapy, so immunizing people or giving an immunoglobulin against the toxin to patients who were really sick, and those studies are all ongoing right now, and those may be something that we're seeing, but I really think that um, recurrent C. diff has um, been solved. Fecal transplant is the answer. It's just a way of figuring out how to do that, how to do it safely, and um, how, to, uh, um, how to do it over a large proportion of people um, Without right now, at this point, there's still not a lot of doctors doing it. There's some challenges. Again, people worried about the FDA, those long-term safety issues. Um, there's a lot of us that are advocating for a national registry where fecal transplant treated patients can be followed for these safety things for a couple of years and say, you know, is it really as safe as we think and that it, that it is?